Everyone knows her father's a lunatic. He was in here tonight, raving. Whoa, slow down, Maurice. Oh, look. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Movies to Drink to. My name is Finn, that's Mr. Smith. And we are back. It's been a while. It has, it has. Things have got in the way. Life. Yes. Yeah. And then we went to record last time and I couldn't find that fucking film. No. So we, <laughs> that... did, we did a news to drink to and didn't record any of my... Oh, shit. Dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah, sound te- on my, yeah, we've had my life issues. We've had technical issues. Yeah. It's been a nightmare. It's hard when you've got to, you know, do a full-time job as well as this. Don't forget yeah. to subscribe. I'm also a touring comedian these days. Yes. <laughs> I'm not, but you can send me money if you want anyway. <laughs> But uh, we are back with a beast of an episode for you. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> a tale as old as time. Apparently so. Yes. We are talking about Beauty and the Beast. Not the... a sequel to Sleeping Beauty. They're not even the same person. Did you... Do I what? <laughs> <laughs> and don't even get me started on Black Beauty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the 1991 animated one, not the fucking 2017 remake pile of shit. Anyway. <laughs> does have Emma Watson in it, though. I don't care for Emma Watson. No? Doesn't do it for me. Not my type. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Plus, you know... <sighs> less competition for me. <laughs> Most of the stuff I've seen her in, she's a child. What? You know, the Harry Potter films. I mean, she's yeah. not now. Okay. <laughs> so it's fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you've made it weird. I know. <laughs> 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 So, Beauty and the Beast from 1991, directed by Gary Trousdale and Kirk Wise. Gary Trousers down. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I told you, the meds have kicked it. <laughs> right. What, what, Viagra? <laughs> it stars Paige O'Hara, Robbie Benson, Richard White, Jerry Orbach, David Ogden Steers, and Angela Lansbury, the nosy bitch. <laughs> we sticking a fucking murder she wrote nose in other people's business anyway the plot of this film beeth a prince cursed to spend his days as a hideous monster sets out to regain his humanity by earning a young woman's love a tale of magic kidnapping and bestiality does it doesn't say that no, the last you're pulling my that. leg <laughs> If he's a prince, he didn't earn no love, he'd just buy that pussy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you think. <laughs> anyway. Money buys everything. Yep, except for happiness. Although, I don't know. Yeah. I'd be I, a lot happier. I think I'd a fuck ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> life would definitely be fucking easier. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Our story begins scarily. Well, it begins on the cheap. It's all told in like stained glass window, like a storyboard. On the cheap? Yeah, it looks on the cheap. Like, I mean, the rest of the film's animated. It's just like, this is tacked on. It's all drawings. Well, this is a, uh, we get a prologue. And basically, so we've got this massive castle in a faraway land called France. Where a, <laughs> Apparently. Where a young prince lives. And he's an arsehole. Spoil, yeah. selfish, unkind. That's literally how the narrator describes him. Yep. Then, one winter's night, an old, ugly-ass beggar woman comes to the castle and offers him a single rose in exchange for shelter from the cold. Help me, I'm ugly! <laughs> but the prince is like, uh, ew, you're ugly, get the fuck off my doorstep. Not just that, he doesn't know this woman. No. You can't just let her in. I mean, that's just promote, That's just teaching kids to let any old fucking person through the door. Just you open the door. If so, you open the door and there's some haggard homeless person there going, I'll give you this flower if you let me in. <laughs> you say no, children. <laughs> like, whatever this is teaching you is wrong. He's a prince, though. It doesn't matter. With many guards and stuff. Doesn't He'll be matter. fine. Well, how did she get to the door then? <laughs> Walked. <laughs> but where are the guards? Inside. It's <laughs> cold outside. <laughs> That's not what a guard does. <laughs> it's like, there's lads, it's a bit chilly. Why don't you come inside for the Why night? Why is the prince answering his own fucking door? I don't know. Maybe the guards are trying to warm up. <laughs> anyway. It's full of holes, this story. He's just like, no, go away, you fuck up. You're yeah. fugly. Uh, but she tells him that true beauty is on the inside. And he's yeah. like, that's just something ugly people say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so with that, the ugly ass beggar woman... Turns into a beautiful enchantress. She's a babe! Yeah. He's like, damn. The prince tries to beg for forgiveness, but the enchantress is having none of this. And she turns him into a hideous beast. 
and also places a spell on the castle and all who live there, which all seems like taking people. it a bit too yeah. far. She's not not just you. All, all of the people that just work here that are trying to earn a living, like and support their families and yep. stuff, and have absolutely nothing to do with this interaction, yep. which is purely just between me and you. Like yep. all of them people are fucked as well. Yeah. Can you imagine paying for the sins of your boss? You, I mean, it's like, so cruel. It would be a completely different story to what pans out here. It would just be like all really angry furnishings. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this guy. Yeah. It's like great. So I'm now a candlestick. Thanks to yeah. because you're an arsehole. Yeah, I wasn't even like part of this. Yeah. I was sleeping. Imagine <laughs> if you were like um, a contractor and you came round just to like do some plumbing, just to fix the toilet. It's like, <laughs> hey, I'm only here to fix the fucking <laughs> toilet, and now I've been turned into a goddamn plunger. <laughs> I gotta get home with a wife. <laughs> Stuck there forever. Yeah, as a plunger. When he eventually gets home, where have you been? Yeah, you're not gonna believe what happened to me. <laughs> Imagine he gets turned into a plunger as well, because all of these things, they, they do kind of similar jobs to what they're yeah. supposed to. So he's just unblocking toilets with his face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just hairy shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm invoicing you for this. It's just a sta- He can't invoice. He's got no hands. He can't. <laughs> Until the day he gets turned back and it's like a 10 year invoice. Yeah. <laughs> immediately sits down at a desk <laughs> writing stuff out and then I guess the enchantress just leaves I don't know back well, out into the him, cold she leaves him with a magic mirror and a, and the rose that he turned down oh yeah so now I guess yeah she goes just back out into the freezing cold I guess yeah uh, so now he's a beast uh, but he's also been given a magic mirror that shows him it's a voyeurism mirror yeah <laughs> it can show you anything it's in kind of like a crystal ball yeah and uh, she lets him keep the rose which is nice yeah and the rose is magic and it will continue to bloom until his 21st birthday and he has until the last petal falls to find true love or will be stuck as a hideous beast forever. 21's too young to know whether you're in love or not. This is Disney, man. Don't care. 21. 16's still, fine. This is, it's teaching kids all the wrong things. Like, <laughs> you've got to be like in love and married by the time you're 21. I don't a think... A bunch of kids. Like, life's over when you're 21. Compared like, to, let strangers into your house. Compared to Little Mermaid, I think this is a better... Do you? Because I'm about to ruin that for you. Some... <laughs> she was 16 in Little Mermaid. I know. Okay, there is that. <laughs> There is that, but also, I'm not going to say it now, but there's something like later on I discovered that makes this even weirder. There's a lot of things. There's a lot. I've got, I've got notes. <laughs> I know. I can see. <laughs> An Iliad of notes. <laughs> so now our movie begins with a song. It's Disney. Come on. Yeah. Uh, we meet Belle singing about how boring the little French village she lives in is. To the people that live in it. Yep, and everyone in town thinks Belle is a weirdo because she likes to read. Yeah, because she reads. We've got ourselves a reader. God, oh, bloody thinkers. <laughs> a woman thinking. Uh, but she's also fit, so all the guys want to bang her. Yeah, she's weird because she reads. Yeah, she's basically she's weird because she's like, uh, she has a brain. Like, she thinks for herself and yeah. she makes like choices and stuff. Yeah. At um, one point, Belle shows off her favourite book to some sheep who start eating the pages. I guess yep. reading doesn't make you smart after all. <laughs> Does it? Here, look at this animal famous for eating everything. Yeah. Oh, you're taking a bite out of my book. <laughs> and I'm surprised by this. Mm. There's also a bit where a butcher, like, stares directly at a woman's tits. Yeah. And then is given, like, a, a severe head injury by his deliberately ugly, ugly wife. drawn wife. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I mean, it's it's there, like in a children's film, yeah. like this buxom woman. Oh and yeah, like the eyes are straight tits. at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We then meet Gaston, the greatest hunter in the whole wide world, according to his manservant and life partner, LeFou. Because the first time we see him, he murders a duck. Yes. <laughs> LeFou is about two foot high, slightly overweight, and has a gap in his teeth. And is constantly sucking Gaston's dick. Yes. It fits through the gap, probably. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like uh, Andrew Tate and Aidan Ross. That kind yeah, of chemistry. That kind of, yeah, yeah. relationship. Gaston is a massive muscular lump of a man with a big hairy chest and a strong jaw. And he wants to marry Belle because she's the most beautiful and that makes her the best. Yes. Th- that's his words. But also, I mean, there's there's quite like frequently, <clears throat> every time he goes on about marrying Belle and stuff, there are three blonde, again, buxom triplets hmm. that are constantly like, oh, we want to bang Gaston. And Gaston's like, Belle. Now, I'm sorry, one Belle triplets yeah bell triplets bell doesn't want to willing triplets incest is legal 
It's in France, actually. <laughs> Apparently, it's not illegal in France, or never. It didn't used to be. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking this is that is Belle the hottest? Because yeah, there are the three b- three hot blondes that want to bang him. Bim bets. Even if it was individually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he's not interested in them because I guess he's because he, they're willing. He's secretly gay. Let's be honest. Maybe or the whole thing is basically just, he wants a the the village we can't have. Yeah, the village agrees that Belle is the most beautiful for yes. some reason. Did you see the redhead with the big tits? <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, so, there, there's plenty of competition in this so village. He has to have the best. Mm. This is a trophy wife. It has to have, have to have the hottest one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Which apparently Belle's pretty Belle. plain. I've got to be honest. <laughs> Belle is. I mean, for an animated, <laughs> they're animated, <laughs> but one of them is drawn with really big boobs, <laughs> and one, three of them are drawn and like really hot blondes. blondes there's w- even a, another uh, hot blonde in the song that someone sings to. It's like bonjour. Bonjour. Yeah, yeah. yeah, her, the one, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, Gaston is a pompous twat, uh, but he's got a great singing voice. And he shoots his shot at Belle by throwing her book in the mud and suggesting they go get drunk. Yeah, he tries to impress her with his illiteracy. <laughs> he's like, how can you read this? It's got no pictures in it. I'm a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Bang me. Yeah. <laughs> but Belle has to go home and help her father, Maurice, who's an inventor and definitely not crazy because she says he's not crazy. Yeah. He's crazy. Even though like, he's spent all his time creating a, was it a steam powered wood, wood chopper? Yeah. He's basically the laughing stock of the town because so he's for crazy. good reason. Yeah. Because yeah. he's crazy. He's a fucking idiot. Belle returns home to find her father has blown a bunch of stuff up and nearly killed himself. He's not great <laughs> at his job. He's working on an invention, which is. Uh, it's yeah, a machine that chops wood basically. Yeah. A very large machine that basically just swings an axe. Yeah, that's that's it. But uh, anyway, invented that would cost like I mean, in, in this day and age, it would probably cost millions to to mass produce yeah. <laughs> when people could just use an axe. Yeah, he's not. Imagine him on Dragon's Den. Yeah, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's not making anybody's life better here. No. But anyway. Uh, Maurice is off to the fair to submit his invention for a ribbon or whatever. He's off to Dragon's Den. Yeah, maybe, yeah. (laughs) Uh, So he packs up and he rides off on his horse, Philippe, dragging his, you know, his hunk of junk with him. Yeah. Later that day, as the sun be setting, Belle's father is lost in some creepy woods because he's an idiot. He's faced with a fork in the road. Yeah, it's like he's never left, like, his house before. Uh, Like, this is only, like, half a mile down the road. And he's like, well, we're fucking lost. (laughs) 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 he comes through a fork in the road one path looks fairly harmless while the other looks dark and scary with mist and and twisted trees it's like that (laughs) simpsons episode where they're on the the rapids (laughs) it's like (laughs) so naturally he takes the dark and scary path yeah even his horse horse is like philippe is upset yeah he's like what the the fuck are you doing (laughs) and he says to he says to Philippe, come on, it's a shortcut. How would you know? Yeah, you're, you're lost. lost. <laughs> what the fuck? This man's a moron. He is crazy. Yeah. He's crazy old Maurice. He doesn't deserve Belle's love. <laughs> <laughs> no. Give it to Gaston. No. <laughs> also bad. <laughs> Maybe Belle should just leave yeah, the village. You know, yeah. Go off and become a doctor. Yeah. Just do something. Just yeah. leave your crappy little town. Sure enough, the dark and scary path... Proves rather scary as a pack of wolves appears. Yeah. Maurice instantly blames Philippe <laughs> for the wolves appearing. <laughs> like, Why mister- did you drag us down here? <laughs> Philippe's like, Are you fucking serious? I must have been distracted by anything else. It should point but- out that Philippe doesn't actually speak. Uh, this isn't. No, although somebody is credited as Philippe's voice in the. <laughs> like- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, bats come out and they attack Philippe and he nearly rides off a cliff before deciding he's had enough of this shit yeah. and he bucks Maurice off riding away leaving Maurice to fend for himself good for you Philippe <laughs> it's not long before crazy old Maurice is being chased through the woods by the wolves and this is when he stumbles upon the gates to an old spooky castle which still looks pretty nice yeah I'd live there I've got to say yeah, yeah especially right when he like pushes his way through the... there's no security here no like I mean if that old woman turned up now she could have just walked in yeah. like, well, uh, like Maurice bangs on the door and then enters the castle to seek shelter just let no, yourself in it's not even you? dusty no. oh I suppose because the duster yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is when we meet Cogsworth yes uh, a talking clock and Lumiere who is a talking candlestick holder 
That's it. Because, uh, was it Crazy Old Maurice grabs hold of Cogsworth as well and looks directly where his bollocks should be. Yeah, for some <laughs> they reason introduce like, themselves yeah. and Maurice instantly starts violating Cogsworth. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, boy or girl? Yeah. Uh, so it's like playing with his innards. Yeah. Like, what the fuck <laughs> is this? like, no, stop it. <laughs> Christ. Lumiere invites Maurice to warm himself by the fire, and the furniture of the house, which is alive, starts making him comfortable. Uh, the, there's a dog that is a footstool. Yep. There's a coat hanger. Uh, there's a talking teapot. This is Mrs. Potts and her son Chip, who's a teacup. And yep. Very fucking annoying. But then the party is over. The beast arrives, and he's furious. Yeah, he's Maurice like is a sat in his proper chair. shitty host. Yeah. <laughs> yet. But it's like. Marie, so Maurice is sat in his chair. He's like, what are you doing here? Yeah. It's like quite a like, menacing scene. Yeah. And uh, so he's like, well, I didn't mean any harm. I was looking for a place to stay. And the beast's like, a place to stay? That's Jason. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, back at He's just like, you want a place to stay? I'll give you a place to stay. And then it cuts. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, so this, this is the guest bedroom. It has its own ensuite with a bidet. <laughs> No, it, it cuts away, but it's it's very menacing. So, uh, y- y- yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, and like all of the uh, the furnishings, all of the other characters don't really say a lot. Like at all, Cosworth is like it was his fault. Like no, they're all terrified. Can you imagine yeah. working for this guy? They're all terrified of him. Yeah, well, they are and they aren't. Like obviously, he has moments because like it's not all bad. Um, Things like they've just learned to put up with his bullshit. Yeah, yeah. He's like, right, come to stare at the beast, have you? And it's like, have you seen you? Yes. <laughs> also, I didn't know you were here. Yeah, didn't know you was here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so it's not all about you, beast. <laughs> Jesus. Back over at the village, Gaston is all dressed up like a twat, and he's organised a wedding and invited the whole town, despite having not actually proposed yeah. to Belle. Spell's surprise wedding. Yeah, he's going to do that bit last, apparently. Yeah. No, Just like okay. the surprise sex he wants to do. Yes. <laughs> His proposal is weird. Well, it's rapey. Um, <laughs> Basically, it's just that uh, you can cook and you can rub my feet and we'll have shitloads of kids. Yeah, he goes, oh yeah, there's loads of women in the, this village, particularly the three triplets. I can't this is probably past. how Stephen Crowder proposed. <laughs> this is like these old right, like, well, yeah, you will be the woman, I'll yeah, be the be man. my little wife. Yeah, you'll be a little wife, barefoot and pregnant, all to live long day. Yeah. yeah. And we'll have nine of them. Yeah, she's gonna, we'll have dogs and, like, children. Like, we'll have nine of them. She's like, nine dogs? Yeah. No, you bell end. <laughs> Get it? You bell fucking cloth eared bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, nine strapping lads like me. Yeah. Like, no, oh, we'll have to drown any awful. of them if they're born female. Yeah, literally that. We're going full China. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So she rejects him, and then she sings some more. Of course, of course, she does. Yeah, the same song. Like it's only been that one song so far, just in three different. Books. There goes the crackhead that I see <laughs> each, each morning. <laughs> At this point, Philippe returns in a right state. Yeah, and Belle asks, "Where's father? What happened? You must pay- take me to him." And Philippe's, Philippe's like, like Fuck on the horse. That, I'm not going back. <laughs> <laughs> no, Barely not. made out alive as it is. This time, because Bell's asked, he's like, yeah, no worries. Get on the back. And yeah. uh, he just goes straight up to I'll, the I'll castle sh- door. I'll show you to Maurice's dead body. Yeah, he's, there you go. He's, he's, he's fucked, he is. Yeah, because he's hallucinated the rest <laughs> of it. The end. <laughs> Philippe's just like, listen, he's probably dead. There's nothing I could do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was done for. Yeah. At least yeah, I think yeah. it was. I was running away. <laughs> anyway, I'm your dad now. <laughs> Mary's uh, guest on. Yeah. Philippe's a dad. Yeah. <laughs> the end. So Philippe takes Belle back to the castle. Belle enters the castle, doesn't knock. No, just walks straight in. Yep. Rude. Word, word gets around the furniture that a girl has entered the castle and Lumiere gets excited because he thinks that she could be the one to break the curse. She's the one. This is definitely the one because yep. it's not the, the- beast's first time. <laughs> That's why she- you said that about the other nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's be honest. This castle's been there a while. Is Belle the first one to walk in? I don't think so. This has happened before, people. Yeah. And failed. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> she's the, it's definitely this one. When they're saying she's the one, yeah. not she's the one to break the spell, it's definitely this time. This time. Yeah, yeah. that's what I think anyway. We won't make the same mistakes as last time, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's not, you know, let's be nice to her. <laughs> yeah. So they lure, they lure her upstairs where her father where she sorry where she finds her father who's been imprisoned but then the beast finds her yep. and naturally he's pissed off because he's always pissed he's off. always pissed yeah, off he's, he's always... just angry that he's got hair all over him yeah i mean you would be too <laughs> I, I mean 
I have over most of me. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> we can see. <laughs> Belle offers to take her father's place. It's yeah, at this weird. point, Belle gets a good look at the beast for the first time. Yeah, she goes, like, step into the light. She's like... <gasps> She's like, Ugh. Ugh. so yeah. what? Have you also like? She's like, oh, take me instead. And she's, he's like, we well, have to promise you won't leave. And she's like, fine. And he's like, done. Yeah. <laughs> and he just grabs her dad, <laughs> just drags him out. Yeah. So the Fucking beast, the beast, no backsies. Yeah. <laughs> He's... Totally forgot to cross her fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and he throws Maurice into this creepy walking carriage thing to take yeah, him back to the village. doesn't look like a comfortable ride. Why is it so scary? <laughs> Why does it have rattlesnake noises and look like a spider? Yeah, where's its wheels? It's so terrifying. <laughs> it's really scary. <laughs> Belle is upset that she didn't get to say goodbye to Maurice, her dad. The Beast shows Belle her room. That's right, she gets a room. No dungeon yeah, for no, her. Fucking women get it easy. It's almost like, like he wants to bang her. Yeah, it's like... The dad gets like some shitty tower prison room yeah. with like not even a toilet. It's just like there's dead rats and shit in it. And he's like, I'll show you to your room. Yeah. She's like, oh, am I staying here? He's like, no. No, 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 no. You're, You're going to stay in this lovely room. You're going yeah, to spend a four poster bed. You're going to live in my castle forever and spend all the live long days sucking my hairy balls. Yes. This is like. Got not- plans for you, number nine. <laughs> What'd you call me? Nami and Belle. What's the title? <laughs> She's watching all through the film. He's like, Audrey, uh, Belle. <laughs> Claudette, wait, we'll just call you number nine. Can you wear this, this number? <laughs> yeah. It's like a little rosette thing with a nine on it. Nine with Belle written. <laughs> just in case. It's like, ah, oh, my beautiful <clears throat> Belle. <laughs> <laughs> On their way to her room, the, ba- the Beast explains that the castle is her home now and she can go wherever she pleases, except the West Wing. Yeah, I've got theories about that too. Because <laughs> that's where the president works. <laughs> He's very busy. hi uh, Well, I-, I won't tell it until we get to that bit, but I have a theory for why she's forbidden to go to the West Wing. She does anyway. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I've, it, it, yeah I've, got, I've got stuff. Okay, got stuff. okay, okay. <laughs> he then demands that she join him for dinner. Yeah, literally demand. Like you start, literally demand. Like, just like ask her nicely, and it's yeah. quite funny. To be fair, it's quite yeah. a funny scene where it's like, "I'd really like you <laughs> to join us for dinner." She's like, "No, it's like please, <laughs> please. <laughs> please." That evening, back down in the village, a light yeah. snowstorm has set in, and Gaston is held up in the local pub by the fire, still pretty pissed off about being rejected. Apparently, Gaston is not the sort of guy who takes no for an answer. Rapey. Yep, he's very rapey. He is. Yes. So in order to try and cheer him up, his servant and life partner LeFou tries yeah. to <laughs> tries to cheer him up with a song about how great Gaston is. It's a song about how much he wants to suck his dick. <laughs> through his gappy teeth. Yeah. At one point during the song, Gaston punches LeFou in the face and then starts a bar brawl which Gaston bites a man in the leg. What's going on here? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and the, the bloke that he's biting sings about how good he is at biting yeah, that, while in a fight. Also, it's actually pretty funny. LeFou, so farcy. Um, Gaston spits at one point and gets LeFou in the mouth. Uh, yeah. like, LeFou's pretty happy about it. Yeah, <laughs> He's like, yeah, spit in my mouth, daddy. So it's like when Aidan Ross sniffed Andrew Tate's seat <laughs> after he... It's very <laughs> Tate and Ross, this yeah, relationship. Completely. Then, just as the song finishes, crazy old Maurice bursts into the pub, screaming for help. And he tells the villagers in the pub about a beast. They don't believe him. And they throw him out into the snow. Yeah. But then Gaston hatches a plan in song form. But he whispers most of the plan, so uh, we don't hear what it is. What it is. Uh, then he dances with LeFou. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Yeah, in celebration. Yeah, but yeah, I, I I find it hard to believe that like this castle is literally five minutes down the road and nobody's ever come across the beast before. Nobody's yeah. ever nobody's ever come back going. I was I was out, you know. Yeah. Like Gaston, for instance, I was out hunting because yeah. I'm a big time hunter. Like, and I see this massive castle. Yeah, no one spotted it apparently. <laughs> no, not even from like the. What's that? I, d- I don't <laughs> think they've ever. They've obviously never left the village. Any of these yeah. people? Because the castle's huge as well. Yeah. Like nobody saw it above the tree line at no. any point. <laughs> it's hidden. I don't know. I'm fucking, I it's don't know. Enchanted. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you it's go. enchanted. Back at the castle, Belle is having a cry when Mrs. Potts and the tea time crew arrive. Now we'll make you a cup of tea. It's literally the only thing they can fucking do. Yep. It's That's just make tea. Her lot in life. Do you want a cup of tea? Not really. Oh. oh okay. I guess. Oh my god, what do I do? Bit of a difference to solving crimes. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that she what caused. Is it? What's the tea lady from uh, Father Ted? 
Oh, this is... Go, uh, on. go on! Go on! Go on, go on! We have a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, and the wardrobe is also a human trapped inside an Abbott object. Yeah, who has moths in her drawers. Yes. <laughs> Poor thing. It's <laughs> an adult joke there. <laughs> Downstairs, the beast is getting angry that Belle hasn't arrived for dinner yet because he's a petulant little bitch. Yeah, because she's exerting a feminism. She's yes. like, I'm not going to dinner just because that man told me to. That <laughs> beast, that wherever he is. Yeah. <laughs> then Cogsworth arrives to inform him that Belle is not, will not be attending dinner. This enrages the beast. So he heads up to her room to shout at her and drops a classic, Then starve! Yeah. <laughs> he's he's going to starve her out. Yeah. It's kind of like the writer's strike. Yeah. <laughs> And he declares if she doesn't eat with him, then she, then she doesn't, doesn't eat, eat at, at all. all. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Like full fritzel. Yes. And the beast heads to the West Wing to use his magic mirror to spy on Belle. Yeah. He doesn't Which even know. Weird. He doesn't actually know her name at this point. He's like, show me the girl. <laughs> Whatever her name is. Number nine. It's just like, random girls. From, like, you have to flick past them. No, yeah. no, it's like Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> left, 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 left. We'll go left. back. There's the, the redhead with the big boobs. <laughs> Oh, the triplets. Yeah. I like them. <laughs> you would do if you... <laughs> There's, you're telling me that he's got that mirror the whole time and not once he's gone, show me the triplets. <laughs> Nobody come in the West Wing. <laughs> show me the hot stuff. Yeah. There it is. Show me your OnlyFans. <laughs> Fuck your subscription. I got a magic mirror. <laughs> Later that evening, I guess, same evening, Belle sneaks out of her room while Lubia tries to fuck a feather duster. Yeah, because he's a horny Frenchman. Yeah, I don't know how he's gonna do that. <laughs> no. Or her. <laughs> well, there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> she heads down to the kitchen because she's hungry. Q, be our guest. Yes, I mean this. Like he's obviously he's already yelled at everybody that she doesn't eat unless she eats with him, yeah. and they are not like quiet about this. <laughs> no, they don't give a fuck. They've no, had they, enough. They of put this on shit. a whole show. Yeah, they just don't care. They're like, oh fuck him. Be our guest. There's also a line in the song which says, Try the grey stuff, it's delicious. Yeah, I know. What food is grey? <laughs> Brains. Also, there's a line in the song that suggests that it's been ten long years. Yes! Right, so, that means... He was eleven. was eleven. Yeah, when the fucking Enchantress... <laughs> which makes the whole Enchantress thing inappropriate, <laughs> at best. Well, she was an old... Ugly woman. Yeah. Yeah, and then she was like, I'm a beautiful enchantress. You haven't let me in. And he's like, please, I want to do you. Like, stuff. But he's 11. Like, he's 11 years old. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and you're punishing an 11-year-old for being stroppy and, like, obnoxious. Yeah. And all of his stuff. That's an 11-year-old boy. Yeah. <laughs> she just punched him in the face. We were all stroppy and obnoxious at 11. <laughs> you can't punish him for that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's weird, and yeah, it's like as, as soon as that, I was like, "Hold on." Yeah, I meant yeah, yeah. Lumiere also mentions in the song that they've been stuck like this for ten years, eleven years old. It's absurd. <laughs> <laughs> and, look- and from eleven, he's got to learn how to love. <laughs> like by the time he's twenty-one. Yeah. Um. I mean, where are his parents? Exactly. Oh, well, I'll tell you where his parents are. Oh, I'll right. Tell you, I've got. Uh, okay, <laughs> I know exactly okay, where okay. his parents are. <laughs> <laughs> After the song, Belle is in the mood for having a look around the castle. She's not eaten, by the way. No, she doesn't seem to have eaten anything no. at all because they were too busy dancing around and, yeah, and being singing, weird. And yeah. throwing the food throwing about. Throwing the food everywhere. She, she didn't actually like, get to eat any of it. Yeah, she's <laughs> just what, like... Weird. Try the great stuff! It's <laughs> delicious! Oh, oh where, where are you going? Oh. <laughs> Could I... Uh... Wasted passing out because she's had no food for fucking days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Be our guest, be our guest. <laughs> Feed me. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, we're singing. Also, uh, the other thing I've like, I had a question. Why doesn't Lumia melt? Yeah, I thought this as well. <laughs> His whole head should melt. I mean, it would. He's made of wax. It would. It would. He be, has like a bit, doesn't he? Yeah, there's like a, like a little like bit a, melted, which is like his hair or something. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, I, it would be horrific if he did. Could you imagine when they turn into like at the end? They're like, then he's all like, <laughs> like that good Robocop when yeah. they throw acid. On well, him. this is the <laughs> thing with um, uh, what happens when Chip turns back. He's got a bit of a skull missing. Yeah. Wibbling. <laughs> 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 yeah. Put it back. Put it back. We don't know where it is. We lost it. It was years ago. It was eight years ago. You got that chip back. Mama, mama, mama. <laughs> I mean, 
this is parts. He's like, now I've got to drown him. <laughs> Save his own his time. <laughs> oh, that might be one of the worst things I've ever said. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, what was the same? Yeah, she, um... Yes. Having a look around the castle. So Lumiere and Cogsworth give her a tour. Belle gets bored of the tour and decides she wants to head up to the West Wing. Uh, Lumiere and <coughs> Cogsworth attempt to distract her with the prospect of a library, but Belle dupes them, and she heads to the West Wing. She's just asking for trouble at this fucking point, isn't she? she? Is. This is also... This is this is my darkest theory. Okay, yeah. The the West Wing is undeniably creepy and full of broken furniture. The beast has clearly been taking out his aggression here. It's a smash room. It is a smash room. Yes. Also, right, so this is like his quarters, his private quarters, this is yeah. where he lives. So when the uh transformation takes place and everything else, he loses his shit. Yeah. Like um and of course, this would be the area where all his closest people would be like near him and around him and trying to calm him down and everything. And all of a sudden, that everybody's saying, so this may also be where his parents were and everything else. Now, it's just surrounded. The whole place is covered in broken furniture. And let, let, let's assume that everybody's been turned into bits of furniture yeah. right, and everything else. That room <laughs> is full of body parts. <laughs> He's just murdered because he lost his shit when he turned into the beast and just smashed everything. And they were like, "No, no!" And he was like, "He killed everyone." Yeah, he did a Kylo Ren. Yeah, <laughs> just destroyed everyone. That's why, like, you can't go in the West Wing because it's covered. And then uh, there's a, a bit later on that, conf- in my mind, confirms it. Right. But you know, yeah, this this is my theory. Like that that was where because because I mean these all the, all these guys like Lumia and Mrs. Potts and all of a sudden they, they're not. You wouldn't say they were like the most important staff. There is another theory though. What's that? Which counters that. Which counters it. Yeah. Go on. So there's lots of furniture. Yeah. Um, which implies that there were loads and loads and loads of people. Yeah. But maybe not all of the people were turned to furniture. So the ones that speak, like Lumiere, Cogsworth, and Mrs. Potts, they were people. Yeah. But there's plenty of furniture that doesn't speak, uh-huh. like the hat stand and stuff. So the other theory is that uh, the staff were turned to furniture, but also the furniture that was already there became enchanted. Right. So they were never people. Okay. But I mean, that's still like, at this point, they're sentient. Yeah. <laughs> so you're still killing sentient beings. Yeah, well, sentient? They can't... Sp- oh, yeah. yeah. But anyway, the, like, I mean, the, the reason I said like, um, say like Lumiere is like a footman or whatever he is, like uh, Cogsworth is the butler. Um, yeah. But there's, the, there's no sign of his parents. Like, right. there's no sign of, like... I mean, as a prince, he would have had, like... There's only actually... Footmen and stuff like so that. So there's only Cogsworth, Lumiere, Mrs. Potts... Yeah, there's not that many, Chip, really. And, and, her, and her kids. Yeah. The dog. The wardrobe. The wardrobe and the chef. Yeah. In the kitchen, which we meet later. Yeah, yeah, where's everybody else? Smash the fuck in the yeah. West Wing! <laughs> 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 oh, dear... Anyway, so Belle has gone to the uh, the undeniably creepy West Wing, and she finds the Rose, and then the Beast. He's there as well, yeah. and he does a bit of a. Uh, he gets angry. He smashes more stuff. Yeah, dude, uh, uh, yeah. Well, they're already dead, so yeah. it doesn't matter. Just smash up the corpses more. So Belle decides <laughs> to leave, which apparently she could have done at any moment. Yeah, <laughs> she just <laughs> she jumps on Philippe, off. who I guess has been waiting outside this whole time. Yeah, and she rides off. Yeah, okay, the end. Yeah, you could have just left. <laughs> Oh, not really a prisoner there, is it? But she is confronted by those bloody wolves from earlier. Gosh darn it. The wolves chase Belle and Philippe, uh, who at one point fall through a frozen lake. Philippe is not having a good time. No, Philippe is a dick of a horse. No, not a dick. That's that's too... He's, he's just dumb as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he's just having a hard time. Yeah. He's like, just want to eat some hay. Yeah, he's just like, yeah. My whole life until now has just barely been leaving the village. <laughs> yeah, and now all this bullshit. <laughs> Eventually, the wolves surround them, and just when it looks like it's all over, the beast arrives, and he fucks up the wolves. He gets pretty yeah. scratched up himself, though, and then he collapses. But does he? Yeah, yeah, he, like, he's like, and like, kills over. Yeah. And then Belle, like, rushes over. She, well, she's going to leave. Yeah. And then she's like, oh. He did save me. Darn it. Uh. So she goes back. Now tell me, how the fuck does she get him on the back of that horse? <laughs> Philippe just had to fucking figure it out. <laughs> Because it doesn't show you. She's just no, like, oh, and then, then, she, then he's on the back of the horse and yeah. they're like wandering off. There's no way Actually, she picks him up. Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I will tell you later. 
Okay. Yeah, she has superhuman strength. Does she? And there's proof of it later. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Intrigued. So yeah, Bell decides to take him back to the castle and nurse him back to health. And he acts like a big baby. Well, yeah. Like, this is... Iodine! Like, <laughs> yeah, he's got, like... She tends to the wound that made him pass out, which is just, like, three or four scratches on his arm. They are quite deep. For a Disney movie, that's yeah. a deep wound. I mean, I don't know how they're so apparent on all the fur. <laughs> 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 But yeah, she, and he's like, oh, oh, it's like, I would have been like, is this why you passed out? You pussy. He is a bit of a wimp, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> Back down at the village, I guess this is, this is all happening on the same night. Gaston and LeFou are still drinking. They are shit-faced. And they've met up with an old, creepy, skinny guy who runs the local asylum. He looks like the guy from um, Phantasm. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they hatch a plan, which is basically this. Gaston... Pays the uh, the cr- the creepy old man to lock up Maurice in the asylum, knowing that Belle will do anything to free her father, including marrying Gaston. Which sounds wildly similar to the rest of the plot of this film. Yes, it's a wild idea. <laughs> 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 How has he come? When nobody listened to Maurice in the first place, yep. so nobody nobody got as far as the he locked me up and Belle swapped places with me. Everything else, they were just like, oh, a beast, fuck off, mate. Like so, like how is and uh, like. But out of, like, thin air, Gaston has gone, oh, I've got a plan, and it's the exact same as the plot. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So they head over to Maurice's place to have him committed, uh, but he's not there. He's decided to go back to the castle to help Belle. Yeah, he literally leaves as they turn up. Yeah, <laughs> it's good timing. Lucky. Gaston leaves, but he makes LeFou stay behind in case Belle or Maurice return. Outside of the house in the winter. Yeah, in the snow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> doesn't die though but LeFou's like yeah okay <laughs> okay yeah don't worry yeah, worth it, I'll do yeah I'll let you suck my cock when I get back oh, yeah, oh, okay, thank yeah, you Gaston, Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> the next day back over at the castle Belle is frolicking in the gardens and the beast watches her for a bit yes beast is in love with her now yes yeah, then he decides he's in love with her yeah uh, because <laughs> Disney <laughs> Because <laughs> George is like, I love her yeah and he says to Cogsworth that he wants to do something for her but what <laughs> let her go yeah, there we go. Do, yeah. You could free go. her. Yeah, yeah. Let's see her family. Yeah. or a dad anyway. Nope. Nope. God nope. knows where nope. her mum is. Uh, but instead, that he decides to show Belle the library. Yeah, it is a pretty impressive library. To be fair, mm. it is big and many a books. And Belle's like <laughs> <laughs> moist, moist, <laughs> slipping off that stool. <laughs> We then get a montage and a song of them falling in love yeah. and the beast learning to use cutlery. I think the beast sings at this point. Uh, well, one of the lines in this song is, I wonder why I didn't see it there before. Because he's a monstrous beast and he threatened yeah, no, to imprison you. It's basically a song about how now she's developing feelings for dog boy. <laughs> <laughs> dog boy. <laughs> anyway, the beast is then bathed and groomed. Yeah, it's bad because uh, tonight's the night they bang. Yeah, because he, uh, yeah. Lumiere explains, uh, Lumiere exclaims that tonight is the night. For bestiality. Oh. Also, yeah, he can't, like, bathe or groom himself. No. No. To be fair, is... he was 11 when he suddenly became very hairy. How do I shave? Yeah, now he's got, like, paws and claws and shit. Yeah. So it's probably disastrous for him. thumbs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Circumcised himself the first time he tried to clean himself. Uh, and then we get another song. That one. The main one. Oh, I've gone backwards. Beauty and the Beast. Taylor thought it's time. Uh, and I they don't have... like any of these songs, I have to be honest. You don't like Be Our Guest? No. No? Not really. I like... Uh... That's the best song in, in the film. Oh, the Gaston one is funny. Mm. I mean, it's no Under the Sea, I grant you. <laughs> Which I don't Love. like either. Love! Love! <laughs> I think the, the score is better than the songs. The score's fantastic, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we get another song, and they have dinner, and they dance in the grand ballroom that no one's been in for years. It's actually a really impressive scene. With it the is, but chandelier um, and all that. Yeah, well, this was wasn't this like um, was it this one or was it the one before? they it, they was using groundbreaking like uh, animation techniques at the time where this was like, like the, the back- first use of computer that animation. Was in, like, yeah, the, some of the backgrounds were CGI. Yeah. So um, yeah, this this whole the background was CGI and they animated over the top of it. Yeah, but the more I look at it, the more it's very ninety CGI. If you look at the background to it, it's all very like there's there's nothing to it. It's all very solid. Yeah, like um, <clears throat> like the, some of those old like kids shows that you used to get where there's like, like VR, like the VR of the time. 
Um, but yeah, you, if the more you look at it, don't look the at the worse it, it gets. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same with that Jurassic. That chandelier looks fantastic. Yeah, it's the same with Jurassic Park. The more yeah. you look at that Bronchosaurus, the worse it gets. Nineties <laughs> yeah. CGI. But it's like it's like on the back, like the columns and everything else. Yeah. You're like, there's nothing really to it. It's think, just lines. Yeah, I think like the 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 chandelier is supposed to be the focal point. Yeah, is it the, the, the yeah, it's supposed focus. to draw your eye. Yeah. and then you're not supposed to be looking at the background. You're supposed to be looking at Bell and, yeah. and, and also the beast. if you watch it now on Disney Plus and have a 4K TV, it's in 4K. It was never meant to be seen yeah, in 4K. Like, yeah. <laughs> we didn't think that would exist. Yeah, like, what? <laughs> They're like, nobody will know. That fucking dickhead with the podcast knows. <laughs> and then after the dance and all that, they head out to the balcony. And Belle says that she's happy there in the castle. He's like, are you happy, Belle? And she's like, yeah. Yeah, and uh, she's happy being the Beast's prisoner, basically. Yeah. And that, kids, is Stockholm Syndrome. Yes. The <laughs> end. <laughs> but she misses her father. So the beast shows her the magic mirror so she can see her father. And she's like, hold on. You have a voyeurism mirror. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> have you been watching me bathe? No. <laughs> uh, but it ain't a happy sight. Crazy old Maurice is basically dying out in the woods because he's useless. Yeah, well, he seems to be having trouble with gravity. <laughs> he's like, show my dad. And he's like, no, I can't get up. I'm whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> It's really weird. It's like, oh, he's dying. He's having a fit. Yeah. Uh, so the beast decides to release Belle, freeing her to go help her father, but also dooming himself and all of his staff. Yeah. If you love me, let me go. <laughs> uh, he also lets her keep the magic mirror, which is nice, I guess. Yeah. Have, have my voyeurism mirror so yeah. you can like check. So you can me. see me. And she's like, never. Bye. <laughs> it's like, what, what time will you be looking? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be, uh, I'll be sure to be, you know, in something sexy. <laughs> it's like, it'd be like that. What's that thing that where you just randomly hit like ran- other people on the computer, like the website, and you just like press the button and it flashes up and it's always people wanking on it. What? Um, fuck. <laughs> what? what? Like, um, it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be like you just randomly connect to somebody like across the world or something and you talk to people, but it's always somebody just having a wank. I have no idea uh, what the uh, fuck this is. I can't remember what it's called. It's it's it's, it's a thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <I> promise. Okay. <laughs> so Bell heads off into the woods. Help me out here, people. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, sure they do. <laughs> so Bell heads off into the woods and finds her father and takes him home. Of course, But of course... LeFou is there waiting. Yep. So he heads off to inform the mob uh, to drag him off to the asylum. But Chip has right. stowed away. Oh, yeah. Chip is also stowed away in Bell's bag. Anyway, so uh, a mob arrives to basically take Maurice to the asylum. Yeah. Because he's... Phantasm like, guy turns up yeah. at the door and he's yeah. like, hand your dad over. Yeah, and they're all laughing like, crazy old Maurice thinks yeah. there's a beast and all this. So in order to prove her father isn't crazy and making up story... Stories. Belle uses the magic mirror to Boy, show the mob who are literally armed with pitchforks and torches that the beast is real. Yeah, they seem like a reasonable bunch. Yeah. And she tries to convince him that he's harmless and Gaston becomes jealous. Well, I think you fancy him. Yeah, basically. He's, he's like, do you want to fuck this dog you boy? Got a, you got a <laughs> thing for this thing? What the fuck? What is wrong with me? I'm hairy. <laughs> huh? What's he got that I don't? A big lipstick dick. <laughs> <laughs> red rocket, red rocket. <laughs> and Belle says he's no monster. You're the monster, Gaston. Gasp. Ooh, teaching moment. Yes. This enrages Gaston further. So he rolls up the townsfolk into an even angrier mob that want to kill the beast. But also sing. Yeah. Yeah. Sing angrily. Yes. Arr, we'll kill him. I wish Trump supporters would do that. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, Gaston says, we'll rid the village of this beast. They didn't even know he existed. Yeah, no, yeah. Like 90 seconds the ago, they didn't know he was there. Yeah. He's, like, he's, not even, he's never even been, never even been to the village. <laughs> Yeah, not once at all. They turn up at his house. Just come into our village. Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> so the mob heads off to the castle, but not before locking Belle and Maurice in the basement. However, Chip, he's there, remember? And he frees them using Maurice's stupid wood chopping machine. Yeah, I know, because it had to have a purpose. Yeah, basically. And that is it. And it's now, destroyed, though. They were too close, and they die in the process. Yeah, they're hacked a bit. <laughs> yeah. And Chip's there like, now you're like me. <laughs> Full of chips! 
We're all chips. Because <laughs> remember, <laughs> Chip is brain damaged. Yeah. <laughs> Severely, there is a bit earlier on. I completely forgot about. It. We were totally past it when, like, Mrs. Potts is like, "Quick, in, into the cupboard with your brothers and sisters." Chip's the only one allowed out. All of the rest of her kids are in there in some sort of coma. They're all like, like yeah. asleep in this thing. But you only ever see Chip. Chip's the only one that ever leaves. That they're cupboard. all dead. Yeah, I know. <laughs> She's not a very good mother. This is a horror film. <laughs> She's a terrible parent. Yeah. Even oh, does it? Yeah. Even at the end, you never see the brothers and sisters. No. Just Chip. Yeah, because all of a sudden there's corpses stuffed in a tea yeah. cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the smell! They've been dead nine years. <laughs> all massive cracks down them. Like. Yeah. Oh god! <laughs> Literally just bodies split in two. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Horrendous. So, a bit later, uh, the mob of the moronic villagers are heading towards the castle. Lumiere, Cogsworth, and the other pieces of furniture see them approaching. And it turns out that these so far friendly and pleasant characters aren't going to take this shit lying down. No. They are up for a fight. Yeah. Oh, fucking bring it on! Let's go! Like, wait, I've got a plan. Yeah, so they arm themselves like a bunch of Ukrainians preparing to defend their home <laughs> from an invading force. But as, as the villagers attempt to break down the door, Mrs. Potts goes to inform the beast that the castle is oh, under he attack. Care. But he's really not interested. He's too yeah, busy he's being... broken. He's a bummed out Being all emo. Yeah, yeah like, he's literally... Oh, just let them kill me. Yeah, man. Oh, what's whatever. the point of life now, anyway? I'm so forlorn. She doesn't even love me. She loves her dad more, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, so God, that I haven't. <laughs> doesn't have a weird li- lipstick tick. <laughs> <laughs> Still a dad, though. The villagers eventually break down the door and mm. find an apparently empty castle with nothing but a just bunch of furniture. old furniture lying around. But it's a trap! Cunning. And they attack and they massacre the villagers. They do. There's death there everywhere. Is death. Some every of turn. them are covered in boiling tea. Oh yeah. One of them. And is- it's that bad. You don't see what happens. Yeah. Like, you just see all the steam oh, the, coming yeah. up. And yeah. like Mrs. Potts's other kids are actually like, yeah. involved in this. <laughs> She's using their corpses to fund. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't. I mean. <laughs> She's yeah. Well. The thing She's is- just there, like behind them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of them is lit. One of the villagers is literally crushed to death by the wardrobe. Yep. Who jumps from a staircase? Cogsworth at one point has a fucking gun. Yeah, I know. Cogsworth goes full fucking. At one uh, point, he stabs Lefou in the anus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Lumiere sets a guy on fire. Yep. <laughs> His heart is horrendous. It is literally a massacre. And Brick. there's that cabinet with the baseball bat waiting around the corner for one of them. Brick had a trident. Brick, Brick <laughs> killed a guy with a trident. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rick killed a guy. <laughs> yeah, things escalate quickly, and the villagers flee. They're like, "Fuck the, the surviving villagers!" <laughs> like, trying to drag their dead friends. Are like, "Let's get out of here, man! <laughs> Leave him, he's dead." It's just limbs coming off. It's like the the beginning of Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, it's literally <laughs> that. <laughs> While all that has been going on. Belle and Maurice are making their way back to the castle while Gaston heads up to the West Wing looking for the beast. Uh, and he finds him and he draws his bow and the beast looks him dead in the eye and just kind of goes, mm. <laughs> uh, Go on, then. I'm so done. Get like, over with. Gaston fires his arrow into the beast, which seems to wake him up a bit. Ah, fuck! Yeah, I imagine it hurts. And Gaston if pushes those little scratches her. Yeah, an arrow in his back is gonna like Jesus. I'm surprised he ain't dead. Yeah. <laughs> Gaston pushes the beast out of a window <laughs> and he fights him on the rooftops of the castle. Gets him in the back with an arrow and he's just there. <sighs> <sighs> but I did. I warned you. Like you yeah. saw. You saw it coming. <laughs> But yes, then they they have some sort of big fight on the rooftops of the the castle. And Gaston goads the beast, like "Fight back! Fight me, old bitch! Yeah. Fight me!" So when Bella arrives at the castle and the beast sees his love and that she's decided to come back, he decides that maybe he doesn't want to die, and he does fight back. And Gaston instantly regrets all of his life choices. Yes, the look on his face is like, <laughs> "Oh well, no! Fuck! What did you expect? <laughs> I mean, the guy is a literal beast. <laughs> it's literal... in the name." Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, they fight more and the beast kicks Gaston's ass yeah. and he dangles him by the throat over the edge as Gaston begs for his life. And he would have killed him if it wasn't for those pesky kids. No. Um, <laughs> he, but he's a changed... He's a changed man. Boy. And he decides to... <laughs> he's a changed 21-year-old. <laughs> and he decides to spare Gaston and he pulls him back onto the roof. And so the beast, he then ascends up the castle roof to a balcony where Belle is waiting for him only for Gaston to jump up behind him and stab him in the back. What did you see? Bastard. Yeah. Like in a Disney film. Like well, you don't see that it go knife. in, but you see him pull you the knife the, out and the you blood. See, well, you see the knife. You, the, what, you do see it in there yeah. and he pulls it out. And it's a big old fucking like Bowie knife. Yeah, yeah. And but, you see blood and everything. Yeah. yeah. He sort of gets him like the kidney area. He's like, yeah. Like that. But then Gaston falls to his death. And the beast yeah. nearly does. Yeah. But Belle She's like, somehow oh. pulls him to safety. <laughs> She's like, Whoop. Exactly. Belle is super, super strong. strong. Told you. Gotcha. Yeah, because he's a hefty lad. Yeah, she's like, oh, gotcha. Yeah. He's just like a 10 foot like, beast. <laughs> like, oh, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but, uh, Gaston dies. He falls to his death. Screaming yeah. like a little bitch. Yeah, he does. Like, I mean, you don't see him hit the ground, but I mean, that's still like, it's like Alan Rickman at the end of Die Hard. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Bell has pulled the, the beast to safety, but unfortunately, he dies. The end. The end. Uh, thank you very much. And the moral of the story is, kids, is uh, true love isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> not really. No, um, not really. <laughs> Bell cries over his body. And then she says that she loves him just moments before the last petal on the rose falls. Yeah. And timing. so a bunch of all, magic all happens. Yeah. Literally, like, like, he just, like, starts spinning around. The beast corpse. Like, the yeah. light coming out of his fingers. So the beast corpse, yeah, it rises up into the air and he transforms into a... How funny would it have been if it turns him back into the prince and he's still dead? <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. No. <laughs> he, uh, he is alive and he's now a... An all right looking guy, but yeah, he's no, he's like, he's no Gaston. He's like a little bit like eighties Mel Gibson. <laughs> he's kind of weird looking. I know he's got a weird nose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a big poofy, <laughs> like hair. Think, a, f- a bit of a mullet. And at first, Belle's like, uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> is it? She you? literally goes like, oh, yeah, babe, ooh, kind of preferred yeah. the hairy, the thing. dog thing. Yeah, can we, can we go back to the dog thing? Yeah. <laughs> Their honeymoon would be fun, wouldn't it? Hey, honey, could you wear the the thing tonight? Yeah. This is just a beast head he has to put on. <laughs> How about tonight you don't sniff my ass? Um. <laughs> and then Lumiere, Cogsworth, and Mrs. Potts and the rest, they turn back into humans. Right. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, 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 the curse is broken. Like everything is like, like all the castle turns nice again. All the people start turning into people. Do you know what we never see? What? The West Wing. No, we don't. At no point does that, like, look at all the flowers coming up, birds singing, like all these other people turning into humans. You never see the West Wing because it's body parts everywhere. Just just bits of people. This is Like his parents yeah. and stuff. I reckon he just locks that area up, maybe burns it down. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you never see the West Wing when it like, goes back. You never see like, it turned, like his bedroom or anything else because they never go in there again because yeah. it is carnage. In there, like, honest. I would have thought that uh, when his staff, after 10 years, yeah, turned back into humans, like, right, I want a fucking word of you. <laughs> we haven't been paid in a decade. Yeah, literally. We've been stuck here. Yeah. You've been a complete fucking prick, bullying, harassment, and now there's more of us than you, and we've got thumbs. Yeah, and your parents are dead because yeah. you killed them. So right. you got no one to protect you. You're fucked. And it's not like we had a day off because all we could do is our jobs because we were literally turned into the things to do our jobs at. Yes. <laughs> also, now he's got no furniture. Yeah, there's no <laughs> furniture left in the house. Let's, uh, let's sit down and talk about it. Where? <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. So, do you know Mrs. Potts? I fancy a cup of tea. Give me a head. Give yeah. Tea coming out of fucking okay. nose. Can't get past that. Keeps trying to pour Mrs. Potts into, the, <laughs> into chips like caved in skull. Yeah. Yeah, chips just on the floor rolling around, <laughs> drooling. Oh. <laughs> yeah. chips oh, my son, fuck. Chips in that guy's asylum now. I'm just like, <laughs> I was a teacup. <laughs> yes, of course you were. My mother was a teapot. 
Uh-huh. Mm, yeah. We had a footstool for a dog. Yeah, uh-huh. Of course you did. Yeah, yeah. Would you like a cup of tea? No, no, Chip. No, we wouldn't. <laughs> anyway, they get married and they live happily ever after. Yeah, but if you notice, this is really jarring because you've got the whole thing where they're dancing and everything else. And as the sort of camera sort of pans out, everybody in the background is really poorly drawn. Like oh, yeah. horrendously drawn. There's, um, there's they're just a... blobs. Uh, I'll see if I can, uh, when we do the video, I'll see if I can find. There's a, when Mrs. Potts goes to the West Wing to inform them the castle's under attack, it's like, it's like <laughs> a white circle with two dots and a line for a mouth. It's like wow. really. This is it. 4K. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It was not made it, for 4K. It looks horrible. Like obviously this is the final scene of the film and it's like this sweeping camera movement supposed to be like and stuff and you just see all the people in the background none of which move. I mean, which isn't uh, okay, like but like, I mean even like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs or something like that <clears throat> when it was all hand drawn. <clears throat> I I'm sure the the backgrounds were more detailed and better than this. But well, why don't you watch it in 4K and tell me? I will. I'll have to. <laughs> this is the thing. Yeah, these are uh, <laughs> A lot of this stuff was not designed for... Yeah, but these people are just blobs. <laughs> it's animation from, like, over 30 years it's ago. like 1991. Yeah, <laughs> I keep forgetting how fucking old I am. Uh, and, yeah, the end. I was 43 when this came out. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think? Um, again, like, it's not my favourite. I genuinely like this film. It's not. I, I think I prefer you, this to. I prefer this one to, to Little Mermaid. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's definitely. It, it's. But a, I enjoyed watch. I enjoyed watching this to do this and like yeah. making the notes. And uh, yeah, the problem is like watching these films now with the the mind that I have now. Yeah. Um, and the jaded <laughs> sort of. Well, it's, yeah, it's the thing. It's like saying that it's not all films age all that well. No. Um, yeah. But and, yeah. Um, I, what's the word I'm looking for? The. Uh, Miserable just, old git, mind. Yeah, yeah, you know, like just the, the way I think about things now. Like, I mean, it was really easy to make notes about this film and think that's not right, that's not right. Like the, again, like the, these when when these films came out, they were like all about morals and values of the time. Yeah. And now you watch them back and you're like, this is awful. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what what is this trying to teach kids? The, um, don't judge a book by its cover. Is the, yeah, but that's also, the overall moral of the story. But all these films are like fucking. The, 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 the entire point of life is to you know find a it's always like young girls you're supposed to by the time you're 20 21 you've or got to 16. find a man and then settle down <laughs> otherwise you know life's pointless yeah it was awful yeah <laughs> <laughs> well there's some people that still believe that oh yeah I know yeah it's weird but, but uh, um, go on no it's yeah I think the uh, the songs aren't really for me so much but i think that the score is fantastic especially the music at the beginning yeah um and the animation is great despite what <laughs> you know yes it's over 30 years old but yeah it's the animation itself like the characters and everything else is great i just find the back i was just always drawn to the background and who's like, watching the background God, me <laughs> why because <laughs> you know that's what we do now is we pick <laughs> like, we watch these films and we look at these things that's first um but yeah, just I, my eye kept going to the backgrounds all the time. It's like this scene just seems worse than what I remember, like the earlier hand drawn ones. Um, as far as like adaptations of Beauty and the Beast goes, yeah, it's it's all right. I haven't seen the live action version of this. Probably never will. No, um, don't bother. I prefer. I don't know if you ever saw it. There was a '90s TV show. Was this with Ron Perlman? Ron Perlman and Linda, Linda Hamilton. Hamilton. I've never seen it. I watched it when it was new. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It was on like a Saturday like uh, on TV, but it was fantastic. It was really kind of dark. I think it, there was only like two seasons of it or something. It didn't right. last very long, maybe even one. Um, it was like a TV miniseries. Thing. It was like a miniseries thing. Right. Yeah, it may have been one 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 season, right. but it was like a uh, beast. Um, he lived in the sewers and um, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but he had like loads of followers and stuff. They weren't like turned into furnishings, like um, and stuff. But he was like. Um, and like like all, all the misfits and stuff like were drawn to him and right. all of that kind of thing. Oh. So and it's fantastic. Like well, I remember it being fantastic. <laughs> right. Uh, you you can't hold me to that. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no. It, it was I, the nineties. I really enjoy this film. I think it's just a lot of fun. Like the characters, like Gaston and Lefou are fucking hilarious. Oh. Um, 
Uh, and yeah, Lou Lu- Lu- and Cogsworth, they're, they're like kind of banter back and forth. Yep. They're, I think it's, it's pretty entertaining. I think it looks great and the score is fantastic. Uh, I think it's not, it's no Aladdin. No. But I think it's a solid movie. There was one joke, and I wish I'd written it down which one. There was one joke that made me laugh out loud, and I can't remember what it was, sadly. So that's oh, terrible. Is it when Cogsworth, when he says, um, oh, you should do something for us, like mm, chocolates, flour, promises you uh, never it? intend to keep. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> promises you never intend to keep, yeah. That's it, yeah. Probably that line was ad-libbed. Yeah. <laughs> that and kept it. it in, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that, I think that was the one that made me laugh. Um, yeah, it's not terribly written. It's like there, There's also some of Beast's lines are actually quite funny. Hmm. Um, like I especially like that bit where he's like, "Would you please join me for dinner?" And like that, that's all very well yeah. done. And also the voice acting, actually, the guy that does the voice of Beast and the guy that does the voice of Gaston. Yeah, Gaston's voice is so, so over the top and yeah. so funny. And he looks nothing like like Gaston. Apparently, like, I think he did at the time. Film. Oh, did he? Yeah, or like his physique. Yeah, was because they LeFou and Gaston were sort of based on um their kind of physiques. Uh, anyway, a bit of trivia about this. There's so much trivia on this. I didn't have a lot of time to read through most of it. And what I did read through was kind of boring. But uh, the budget of this was $25 million. It, the gross of this, $424 million. Wow. Yes, that is big bucks. Big, big bucks. Uh, all the songs were the last works of Howard Ashman. He died eight months before the film's release. Oh, wow. Yes. He also did the songs of The Little Mermaid. Which are very good. <laughs> Oh, well, he, he won't be offended, he said. Um, <laughs> scenes that were storyboarded but never animated include the beast dragging a dead animal he'd killed back to his castle and Gaston visiting the asylum. Uh, but why? They were considered too dark. Uh, no, but why did he visit the asylum? Yeah, I don't fucking know. We never they, saw. They, they hatched the plan in the bar and then... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't why know. It was never made. It didn't it was, make any it sense. It was never put on. To, <laughs> maybe it was. I don't fucking know. Maybe they changed things. I did, honestly, your research is half-assed at times, Finn. Well, you go fucking find <laughs> out then, and you can edit this after we're done as well. You lazy cunt. <laughs> oh, touchy. <laughs> Although never mentioned in the film, it has been confirmed that the beast's real name is Eric Adam. That's what I said. Yeah, nearly. <laughs> Eric's was in the other one. Oh, Prince Eric. Eric. Yeah. yeah, this is Prince Adam. Prince Adam, that's He Man. Oh yeah. <laughs> In the Chinese I aloft my mighty sword, become a dog boy. <laughs> In the Chinese dub for this film, the beast was voiced by Jackie Chan. Nice. Yes. I want that. Did version. the singing as well? Did he? Yeah. Oh, I want it. Apparently, Jackie Chan is actually kind of a bell end. Really? I've never heard that. Disowned his gay daughter. Did he? Yeah. I, I I put a video on my stories the the other a couple of days ago of like him watching his early films with his daughter. That's not real, huh? That's not real. What do you mean it's not real? It's from a film. Is it? Yeah, that's not his real daughter. Oh, I didn't know. That. Yeah, I was like, I was quite moved by that. Yeah, no, it's a clip from a movie. Damn it! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit crushed because that. that video went viral and people yeah. thought it was real. And it's yeah. like, no, that's not his real daughter. That's from this movie. His real daughter is this uh, LGBT, like gay lesbian woman, and he's <laughs> disowned her. Oh, because she's gay. That's sad. Apparently, yeah. Apparently, that's, what I, that's what I read, Damn man. That's what you I read. had me fooled, Jackie. Yeah. Uh, the role of Cogsworth was written for John Cleese, but he turned it down. I don't know why. For you ask. <laughs> And it won two Oscars, uh, Best Original Song and the Best Score, and it was nominated for Best Picture. I remember. Do you know what won, though, instead? In 1991? Yep. No. Science of the Lambs. Oh. Definitely a better film. Yeah, it's a good film. <laughs> It's a great film. There's no arguing with that. And some comments? I got some. I got, I think, one. Ah! Okay. Ah! The fuck? I got, uh, right, Insta. Uh, Brandy Pink Disco Ball. Uh, proves if you're rich, you can get away with anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. Fluffy McReary, yeah, but he does give her a library. <laughs> 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 I think that's into, like, for sort of context, my uh, blurb thing was uh, I couldn't find 
Invasion USA, a movie where Chuck Norris blows shit up and single-handedly saves America. So we're up to for a similar movie for the next episode of Movies to Drink To. And now we'll be chatting about Disney's Beauty and the Beast, a charming tale of magic, kidnapping, Stockholm Syndrome, and bestiality. So that makes more sense when she says, yeah, but he did give her a library. Yeah. Uh, and then mm-hmm. on Facebook, I had uh, Delta Force is always a strong backup. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, Etherton, that gives Which me nothing. Which one's Delta Force? Uh, it's another Chuck Norris one. Like there was, wasn't there about eight of them? I think in the end. Uh, Luke Meadows, is this the cartoon or the film? Either way, I wonder if he has a lipstick willy like a dog, or is it barbed like a cat? Which is a valid question. More, I'd say more like a dog. I, I, I'd yeah. definitely go for the lipstick. Um, I'm sure you would. And then Mark Mayer, my friend Mark Mayer, again with a completely irrelevant comment, as always. It's not quite the same story if the beast lives in a trailer. Thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. A trailer. Basically, if Beast was poor, he's saying, but in a roundabout way. Yeah, well, it's like Brandy said, you can get anything yeah, you can if you get rich. away with anything when you're rich. I don't get how he's got any money, though. But yeah, I don't know what he does for a living. Oh, it mooches off his parents, who are now dead. Yeah, but there's no villagers paying tax for 10 years, because I don't know he's there. Yeah. That's what, that's what I mean, where they're not getting paid. Well, I don't know. Maybe the will paid out after he killed his parents. <clears throat> Maybe there's a quill that's a lawyer or something. <laughs> I don't personally see it as bestiality because she falls for his heart, which is human. Stockholm syndrome, however, is definitely an issue. That's from Trisho505. Wrong. <laughs> it's bestiality, however, whichever way you look at it. Uh, don't pigs have human hearts? So like, uh, heart... don't, I don't think well, they have pig hearts. No, but they're... But it's similar to a human yeah, heart. Yeah, you can put yeah. a pig heart and a human heart and you'll be fine. Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> I mean, are you saying that if... Like, say you've got a dog, right, and it becomes, like, sentient like a person, and you fuck that dog. Is that not bestiality? No. Yes, it is. If you have a human that is turned into a dog, and you love the dog... But you fuck it while it's no, a No, no, there's no fucking in this film. <laughs> no, at no point does let's anyone... Let's not pretend that they didn't fuck at some point. After he turned back? Maybe. We oh, don't what? know. Who, who knows? When did they fuck? They hated each other for most of the movie. Not really, for about ten minutes. <laughs> most of the film. <laughs> You were too busy watching the background. No, and then there's a whole montage about how they... Fit. We don't know how long that montage was. This whole thing happens over like two days. You say. It definitely does. <laughs> you barely do your research. Most of the movie happens in one night. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, fuck. Pocahontas, maybe. Now that is a problematic film. That is hugely problematic. <laughs> <laughs> I also really want to do Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. No, no. It's terrible. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as far as musical goes, like, I can handle, uh, you know, a 90-minute Disney movie. Yeah. I don't know about some... <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like musicals where they sing all the time. I don't think this is like all the time. It's just like the whole concept. It's another one of those things where back in the day it was like really wholesome and now you're like... <gasps> <laughs> oh... <laughs> Cancel it. Yeah. <laughs> Gen Z, like, having palpitations over it. Clutching their pearls. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's it for this uh, episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, did I say that? I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably at the beginning. Probably at remember. the beginning. But um, the, the like and subscribe thing should just be done th- th- by this point. Like, yeah, we've, we've, we've said this enough. It's 2023. I shouldn't have to fucking say yeah. it. Right, we'll see you later. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>